Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to a bit of Spyro the Dragon. I am the Herald of the Amethyst Drake, and as of yesterday, I had finished recording a bit of Spyro Reignited Trilogy, where I had played the Reignited Trilogy for the first time ever, and uh, I thought it was pretty good, so I'm going to play the originals once again and perform my pilgrimage through the three games entirely uh, through an emulator, at least I hope to. Uh, now, with a bit of... Uh, I don't always intend on completing the uh, the uh, the let's play, hence why it's only a bit of. Uh, but in the event that we do complete it, well, I uh, certainly hope we have a fantastic time along the way. Uh, so I'm going to be trying to take this one a bit more seriously. I think uh, I would like to try and get through it as uh, um, as effectively as I can, and not talk about gaming news or such, and try and focus a bit more on the game and listen to the audio as well. Now, for full disclosure, I am playing on an emulator as well. So having things like uh, access to memory cards and save slots and all that isn't really important to me right now. Uh, so we'll be able to, uh, um, you know, save scum. Uh, not that I'm really good. I really plan on sort of doing things like that anyway. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, so we're going to play uh, through the uh, three games and hopefully have a pleasant time along the way and perhaps even take advantage of the uh, features that we can get from an emulator. Now I am also using the Xbox One controller as well, so if I'm a bit rusty with the controls, because I, I don't really play PS1 games on emulators very much, uh, I, I may be missing the uh, muscle memory that comes from PS1 controller, as well as the fact that th th these controllers are very different to how they used to be. Uh, so I may suck a bit, so my reactions might be a bit poor and, uh, and all this kind of stuff, but we'll see how it fares. Also, let me know what you feel about the audio and the video. I don't know if I'm going to do this in 645x480 uh, with the black borders, but still in 720p. Uh, or if you want me to do it widescreen, let me know what you prefer. I might do one way for one game and one game uh, one way for another. I'm interrupting the story. Let's have a listen. We now have 12,000 treasure, or is it 14,000? What about this Ganassi Ganort character? Now, I understand he's found a magic spell to turn gems into warriors for his cause. I'll take that question. Nasty Nort is a simple creature. Bimbo. He has been contained in a remote world and is no threat to the Dragon Kingdom. No threat! Besides, he is an ugly bad dozen. Looks like I've got some things to do. So there we have Nasty Nork, who has been considered no threat, no threat, and uh, has begun to attack the dragons. Now, what I liked about the Re Reignited trilogy right off the bat was um, how Nasty was watching it on a telly, and you could and you could sort of see his sort of bedroom kind of thing, which you do see at the end of the of the secret level of the first game. Uh, where you could uh, sort of see like all these motivational posters and things like that and all the fan mail that was piling up. So I thought that was quite clever. So let's have a bit of a play, shall we, and see how we uh, fare. I was just about to use the right stick to uh, move the camera around, but of course that doesn't work in the originals. You have to use the uh, the uh, shoulder buttons. Now, uh, for some reason, I've got a, a bit of a speed button um, uh, applied to the right trigger, so um, I hope that won't affect the game too much, especially when I'm moving, because as you'll see, it does things like that. Then find the balloonist. He'll transport you to the next world. What about Nasty Nord? I'm going after him. Find dragons first. That's all I can tell you. Okay. So we've been given our first mission in Spire the Dragon. We have been told to collect ten dragons and then find the balloonist. Quite a vague instruction, but as we explore the lobby, we'll be able to uh, understand what this means better. So in the Reunited Trilogy, there was a door here. Um, oh, hang on. Sorry, I've got to hold down the... Uh, the uh, triangle button, or the Y button in this case, uh, there used to be a door here, a double-sided door, uh, rather, double doors, and if you slammed into them, they would shake, uh, as if you could sort of go through them, uh, but you couldn't, it turned out, upon hitting them, and I hadn't realised this until after playing the, uh, um, the re uh, sorry, completing the, the original game, sorry, completing the reenacted trilogy, um, that those were the, that those, there were those doors and um, you, could pass, uh, you couldn't pass through them. So uh, there's been a lot of theories suggesting that there may be uh, a secret level uh, or future DLC hidden behind that door. I don't know what's planned for it, but I, I mean, my theory is simply uh, just um, that it is the, it, it's simply just there for continuity's sake. Like how did the dragons get here? 
Um, you, uh, quite a few platform games have made an effort to uh, sort of have their starting level provide you with the beginning. Uh, like uh, Crash Bandicoot 2 has one of my favorites where uh, Crash and Coco uh, in the first level uh, basically just uh, you know, sat around and so Crash has to do this sort of tutorial style level. Uh, but if you skip past that cutscene, you don't get to do that level. Falling from high mountain peaks, plummeting into prehistoric glaciers? <laughs> that. The voice acting in the originals isn't quite as comedic uh, or as eccentric or as, uh, I won't say try hard, but uh, it's, it's not as uh, pronounced, shall we say. Um, because like uh, Nest, I think, was it? I forgot the name of the dragon already. Uh, the dragon there was uh, was a lot more animated as well, and uh, in both in both voice and um, um, uh, character animations, uh, th they uh, sort of moved their arms around a lot. They uh, sort of made the image more evocative of falling from great heights, um, as we're warned about here. Oh yeah, um, in the original uh, game, because I'm I mean I'm gonna do this video in the assumption that you haven't seen the uh, a bit of Spyro Reignite trilogy. Um, in the original Spyro, uh, instead of hovering and getting that slight jump up, you actually just plummet straight down, which can be useful if you've overshot a mark, uh, because not because a lot of the, uh, the the platforms are designed in such a way where you're actually. Um, oops, sorry, that speed got me there. I was expecting to hover again. Um, it's like you're expected to overshoot uh, a lot of these landings, so you've got to sort of land yourself, uh, or if you've got mad skills like I don't. Uh, then you'll be able to uh, land it a lot better. So in the artisan's home world, you're actually supposed to go off a lot of, against a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, passive enemies who don't really pose much of a threat, um, uh, which also drop gems. Uh, that's one of uh, the hints of uh, the sort of uh, nuggets of lore for you as well. That uh, not only did Nasty Nord uh, uh, freeze all the dragons in crystal. Uh, he also turned all the dragon treasure into enemies. Cool, Brad. Do that again. The artisan's boss is through a portal in the dragon mouth, but you are not yet ready, Spyro. First, you must complete one of the other artisan lands. So Argus tells us here that we've got to complete one of the levels before we can face off with the uh, the creature bef behind this door. I really must change that control so it's not speeding up the game too much. Now, um, although the gems have different values, 1, 2, 5, 10, and 25, um, it doesn't signify the challenge rating of an enemy in any way, as far as I'm aware. Um, and not every enemy is, in co is consistent with its gem drops, um, because some gems will be placed around the level in certain ways and others won't. I'll have to, I'll have to look out for that. Also as well, uh, gems in the wall, that's a big thing. I love gems in the wall there. I mean, well, about what? Well, maybe I wonder how many pixels are in that gem there. Maybe thirty. I think I go with about forty gems. Now there's a secret here as well, but first I'm going to free this dragon. Where's Nasty Nork? All torches. Keep your horns on, Spyro. You have much to learn first. Do you know what the dragonfly following you is doing? His name is Sparks, and he's helping and protecting you. Keep an eye on him and see what I mean. In the uh, Reignited Trilogy, I think Sparks was actually standing near Delvin there, and he um, was sort of flying around. Uh, but I remember playing the first level of, uh, of this um, uh, in my in my Reignited Trilogy playthrough, and I noticed actually uh, Sparks wasn't near uh, Spyro in the cutscene. So we've unlocked uh, one of the levels here. This is Sunny Flight. This is one of the sort of bonus rounds that you'll do. And uh, it was hidden behind these uh, stones. Uh, you step on uh, them once each and uh, it opens the door. Now if you step on uh, the same one twice uh, in any order, um, the door will remain closed until you uh, exit the lobby uh, via the balloonist or one of the portals here. But you can come back and unlock it again. So it's not permanently locked out or anything like that. Got the hedge mage here. Uh, I have to say, I, I quite enjoy the detail on the on the hedges. They've clearly tried to uh, give some kind of 3D effect to it, uh, or some kind of effect of depth, uh, which is starting to become quite common in, on the PS1. Uh, I think um, 
the uh, the the Tomb Raider games did a lot of things like that with its foliage, uh, like like rocks had a lot of detail. Oh, and you've got to see the detail in this game. Like in my top ten levels of Spire of the Dragon, um, I had talked about the symmetry all the time, and you'll see a lot of it here. All these patterns on the wall and uh, all these shapes. I'm going to be looking at every single one of them, and just being like, "Wow, this is awesome!" So we've got 100 out of 100 uh, dragon treasure, and uh, we've got the balloonist here, another gem the, uh, in the wall there. Uh, so we've got the balloonist here. If you prove your worth by rescuing 10 dragons, then you may use this balloon to fly to a new world. And that's Marco the balloonist. Um, and uh, yes, his identity is concealed there with his uh, uh, Roy Chubby Brown uh, flying goggles and scarf there. So I'm just trying to think of where we're going to go now. Um, we could go to Dark Hollow, we could go to Stonehill, or we could go to Town Square. And we've got plenty of time. I'm going to make these videos about an hour and ten minutes. Um, but I might make this one just a bit longer. Um, because I've got the time today, and I'm not going to be able to have that much recording. Also, I'm doing this before I've seen any comments on the final part of the A Bit of Spyro Reignited Trilogy. But uh, I thank you in advance for those. Uh, I like how the uh, sort of level uh, move the sort of skybox of the level moves in the background i don't think it did in the uh, reignited trilogy but it still had this really nice misty effect that uh, that happened uh, as you approach the uh, the the, uh, uh, the portal so when you've got gems from any from any zone they all go into one chest into another there and i think it is the exact amount of uh, gems that you did collect so i kind of like that and i think that would uh, remain for the uh, uh, for all three games as it was bloody fun kind of like when you're feeding um, the two overwhelmingly obese uh, hippo and pig creatures in uh, DK64 it would show the exact same uh, amount of bananas I think welcome to town square Spyro begin exploring by gliding to that area with the bull use the L2 and R2 buttons to get a good look I only noticed now as well that the dragons in the artisan's world, for the most part, sound really posh. So, yeah. Now, something that seems very distinct to me, and I'm not sure if this is in the European version of the game, but these bulls have red horns. Um, obviously signifying blood, and I, I don't seem to remember that in the European artwork, and it, as far as I'm aware, it wasn't on the cover art of the game either. Now, I am playing the American version of the game, which is the only one I could find um, that worked. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's European versions that work as well, but damned if I'm going to ask about, um, you know, I'm going to go for the first one that works. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I don't think it was there, and it probably was because of censorship laws at the time. I had the worst itch on the tip of my wing. Did you know that you get your longest glides by pressing X at the very top of your jump? Yeah, so it's quite typical in uh, platform games that uh, characters would have a different jump. Uh, they'd have a small jump like that, and a longer jump like that. Actually, spot jumps quite high uh, for a four-legged character that would mostly be relying on uh, oops, the daisies, on um, on uh, on flight. So, so I'm just charging around, and I'm noticing that the. Uh, the, the way that Spyro charges is actually quite... It goes out in a nice, large arc. Perhaps a bit too wide um, in retrospect. Now I've sort of seen how uh, the Reignited Trilogy does it. I mean, for comfort, I prefer the Reignited Trilogy. I don't remember this many balls, but... Uh, oh well, I can't complain. So yeah, so you can uh, stick them in the ground and uh, they'll just remain there like so. Um, with the funniest sound as well. Uh, and if you flame them, you don't get any more gems. Once you've charged them or, or flamed them once, you've, you've already got the uh, the gem. But yeah, I, I sort of, in a way, I like the original Spyro charging like this because, uh, first of all, a lot of the chests like that uh, are sort of designed to go in, a, in, in to suit his sort of charging arc. So that's quite fun. Um, oh. 
but also as well, it's like, I mean, I, I, I like the... So, sometimes I do like that old school... Um, that Those old school controls. Something I have, have to say about the architecture here, like, what kind of view is that that you're getting from that window there? Oh, great, I get to see a ledge. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things in this game that make me wonder, like... I just, I, and I couldn't shake the, the, the idea that dragons lived here and a lot of this stuff isn't really suited for them. You'll see this in the Beastmaker's world, especially where there's like these tiny little huts um, that are just held up on a, on a really thin stick. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite fascinating to see, really. So by flaming this in rapid succession, the fan spins so rapidly that it, I don't know, breaks the chest and we get the loot. Thank you for releasing me. Now, I'm pretty sure this one had a hint in the original, uh, so in the Reignited Trilogy. I'm going to be doing that a lot, by the way. I think that'll be a drinking game later on. So now we record eight of the dragons. Let's have a look in our inventory. Uh, so we've got four of the egg. Uh, so four of the dragons. We've got two hundred gems, and we've also got our egg. How many eggs are there? One, two, three. There's twelve eggs. Okay, so we're going to get the majority of the eggs in uh, the Magic Crafters world. Uh, but if we get all of the eggs before we get there, uh, I don't know why I'm going all the way back here. Um, I'm not concentrating, that's why. If we get all the eggs in the uh, before the Magic Crafters world, we pretty much get to skip that entire world. And I do believe if you get all the gems in the Peacekeeper's world, just, just the world alone, and all the levels from uh, the Artisan's home world, you can go straight onto the Magic Crafters world, so you can skip two entire worlds. But you're going to have a tough time progressing, because you need, I think it's 50 dragons freed later on. I really shouldn't spoil too much, should I? Because it's, uh, um, yeah, I think it's going to ruin the experience for some, for some people, I think. So, uh, here we've got Stone Hill. We're going to go here next. This was one of the levels in my top 10. Another level from this world. Uh, it was from my top 10 levels in Spire of the Dragon as well. Now, we're entering one of the more open levels. This is where, uh, I think this is one of the best levels because it showcases. Uh, Insomniac's uh, uh, design capabilities and I think is one of the better collectathon levels in PlayStation 1 gaming because it's not so overwhelmingly large that you're never going to find everything. Uh, there's lots of landmarks, lots of different segments uh, really easy to navigate like for starters we're, like, we're just here now this is the first room and already we can see the end portal just by going to one extra room uh, so it's, it's laid out quite well and it's uh, circular as well so no matter what you go you're always going to find your way back it is a bit repetitive uh, is this map so it might be easy it might be uh, easy to get confused so it might get easy to be free. it'll be easy to get confused that's what I'm trying to say after you freed all the dragons, pass through this fancy vortex uh, thingamay, digger. It'll take you back to the artisan home. But first, let me tell you a story. No thanks. See ya. <laughs> vortex thingamajigger. I mean, that kind of just sums up a lot of the uh, the, the, the terminology. Because I keep thinking, well, what's what's what are the uh, what are those things called? The portals, the, the vortexes, the whirly gigs. I know what that is. That's a key. Oh yes, water. For anyone who has never seen a spire game before, it's harmful in this game. Uh, also, sparks as well as turn blue uh, because it's taking damage. So go from gold to blue to green, and then on the final, and then when you die, when you're about to die, he won't be there at all. And all enemies do the same damage as well. So that's the area pretty much done. Except I would like to actually open that uh, that chest that has the key. So if we go down here. 
I gotta be careful because I don't want that whirly geek to take me up again. There we go. I like how uh, Spyro's head tracks the, the key as well. I like I like that very much. Another character here, Gavin. Watch the dragonfly Spyro. His color indicates his power. When we eat butterflies, they stay strong. They win. <laughs> um, yeah, so we get butterflies from uh, all kinds of critters. Uh, critters, fod uh, another word for them is fodder. If we step on this platform here, we can replay the dragon and get that information again. And we can save the game as well. And a memory card has been detected even though we're on our emulator. How fascinating. What times we live in. So I was saying earlier that this is one of the better collectible levels on the PlayStation 1. It's, uh, I, I think it's fantastically designed and a great introduction to how um, uh, Insomniac could uh, later make levels. I think it's, I think it's uh, almost like a good handbook, really, for uh, collective on design. More symmetry there. But yeah, it's not just massively open and full of shite or full of nothing. It's very well structured. You're saving your progress. That could be useful if you run into trouble. Not that you ever run into trouble, Spyro. Also, as well, this room looks very different to the uh, to the Reignited trilogy. This was uh, sort of more earthen, and there were vines everywhere. And I think there was actually this part here was open up as uh, would uh, sort of open up as well and reveal sunlight. Uh, but here we've got these sort of Cthulhuoid tentacles on the wall, um, and these lovely uh, patterns on the floor. Absolutely love it. Sorry, I've just got to stop and look. When I did my top 10 levels of Spyro the Dragon, my I was recording on the Elgato and I had even more trouble then than I did recording the... Uh... Sorry, that was the... That's the... If it would stop interrupting me, that's the signature uh, laugh of the thief there. It was interrupting me. Um, yeah, I had a lot more trouble recording then, so I couldn't actually get a lot of the footage I wanted to, to use. Um, Nort Cove would have been my... Possibly my number one level. Uh, had it not been for the Elgato not being able to record it and put it into Sony Vegas. Uh, I've since solved that problem, so I, I could maybe do a revised list, but... Um, I mean, really, I, I think I think that I, I, I hardly disagree with the list I made. I, I still stand by it. And of course, how, how how could I change it? I mean, you know, they are top, they are Spyro's top ten levels. I mean, I am the Herald of the Amethyst Drake, the Maw of Miracle. The, uh, the the uh, the purple worm. I mean, do we have to have another war proving that I am? After the other 73, I shouldn't think so. You bet. For the longest glide, press the X button at the top of the jump and try pressing the triangle button to drop down in mid flight. See, the dragons remain quite helpful throughout the game, but. Uh, Depending because of the sort of like non-linear um, design of the uh, of the levels and how you approach them, it's very unlikely that the hints are going to be accurate at the time. I mean, a lot of the dragons would later on when they're not talking about Spyro and how to help Spyro. It's more about how to help you in that level. Like, oh, this enemy can't be charged, so you have to use this attack, or or this enemy can't attack this way. You got to do something like this, or. Um, you know, there's a ledge over there. Why don't you try and get over there? Things like that. Another thing I like, speaking about the level design, another thing I love about this level is, um, I'm sorry, I might have to actually turn the uh, active camera so it follows me around a bit better. Um, so yeah, one thing I love about uh, the level design here as well is that you can take the high ground. You can have a nice look around and um, be able to see things more clearly. And you can also drop into a part that you uh, previously wanted to go to in as well. That's good. Now, in the Reignited Trilogy, I had a great difficulty with this level. Indeed, quite a few others because of the amount of uh, grass that was uh, pointy and obscured the gems. But if you just see over there, there was a glint. I could see the gems over there, so I know I'm missing some, so I can go back and get those. Uh, it wasn't quite as clear in the um, Reignited Trilogy. Also, as well, I can't use sparks to uh, uh, point me to gems, unfortunately. So I really am on my own. But hopefully, the intuition 
will uh, kick in and I'll remember everything about the game that I need to know. So we need another five gems. I wonder where they are. Pretty sure it's five gems. Yep, need another five gems. Two. So we need another two gems. It can either be two reds or one green. Also, you got this really weird sound when Spyro lifts off the uh, uh, off the ground, like he's stuck in, like he's stuck on something sticky. You know, like when you lift his shoe off uh, like a vinyl floor or something that's and they're covered in dried piss. Pleasant image, I know. <laughs> oh yes, as well in the American version, I've noticed that the bonus song doesn't play. So when the loop for the original song ends, there was a there's an additional rare unheard song that played. I say unheard. It's, it, is, it was eventually heard and you can hear it in my video. Unless I've just gone mad and it can't actually be heard. Now those aren't gems, they're sheep. Intuition, where the hell are you when I need you the most? Don't embarrass me now, I'm supposed to be the best Spyro player in the goddamn world. Of course, when I get things wrong, uh, you know, I, I pin it on, you know, comical effect and I'll just say that Super Spyro fan will be watching this and he can correct me. So, yeah. And, and I, I must ask some questions throughout the, this, this series as well, because I'm sure more people will be watching this. I mean, not after this first episode, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, um, if you want to ask me questions, I'll try and answer your comments as best I can. If you've seen the Reignited Trilogy series, then uh, that didn't go all too well. But uh, hey, if you're enjoying it, please let me know in the comments, and uh, yeah, I'll try and answer whatever comments you've got, or respond to them. And if we can talk about gaming news as well, that'd be fantastic. While things are going quiet, which currently they are, because I kind of run out of things to say, really. Mm. It's two sodding gems, it has to be up here. Oh, shit. Right, no, I ain't, I'm not getting back from that. And even then, you can only land so far away from. Uh, a surface before eventually um, you just cack it and uh, you uh, uh, Spyro just dies automatically so it's like it doesn't matter, Even you can leap out of the water normally but as, as we saw earlier um, when I demonstrated the water originally but now but if, you, if, sorry, but if you're so far away you can only do so much So thieves don't drop any gems. I would have got it earlier anyway. Ah, there we are, a container. Now I think the containers uh, glint as well. They have that slight glimmer to them. We'll just go down again. And we'll find our way back uh, the old fashioned way. Now the first two maps that I've shown you have, uh, have got quite a bit of verticality to them. Uh, this only goes balls to the wall crazy in um, in the Magic Crafters world, no, sorry, in the Dreamweaver's world. And yes, there really is a place called the Dreamweaver's world. Um, I wonder if it was maybe before or after the software. Who knows? Now we could go on to face the Toasty, uh, the uh, character hidden in the uh, in the Dragon Head door. Uh, but uh, I think we best just do Dark Hollow. And then we'll go there. So this was another level that made it on my top ten list. Also saw the blood on the swords as well. That wasn't there before in the in the EU version. Um, Spyro has had quite a few things censored in the past. I think we all know the uh, um, the the one about like uh, not defeating enemies but killing them. So it would say defeat in the text in the subtitles, at least in the second game. But then it would say kill in the audio. Because it was a lot easier to change the text than it was the audio. Oh, it's you! I wasn't sure if you'd escape those annoying little creatures. Of course, they wouldn't bother me, but here's a hint. Metal armor is fireproof, but a charge attack will take care of them. Interesting. I think this is one of the best levels for hints, because it just told you there one of the fundamental mechanics. Spyro cannot uh, uh, flame. Uh, metal uh, armored enemies 
or enemies made of metal, as you may see later on. Unless he has the super flame, so there it goes red. So, we have to charge them. Now, we can't charge large enemies, or they laugh at us like that. We can flame them. So, large enemies you flame, smaller enemies uh, or armored enemies you charge. However, they may, oh, you will see later on a large enemy that can't be flamed. Uh, see why. Oh, flame them from behind because they've got no armor. There you go. Backstab multiplier. That's what I'm talking about. This is more of an RPG than most modern RPGs. I have to say, um, the dragon that we saw earlier, I think also as well, I noticed that I think in the American version of the game, the, the, the character's names, when it says rescued so-and-so, it's larger than the word rescued. I'm not sure if that was in the EU version. It's just that I, I, I only just noticed. But yeah, the uh, character's voice complemented the music incredibly well. As does this one. Use the triangle button when you want to zoom in and look around. Oh, your secret's safe with me. The percussions are really well, are really good here as well. Quite different, uh, lighter than what I'm used to with Stuart Copeland's stuff. Because he was the composer of uh, the Spyro games music. Okay. I wonder where that light's coming from. Hmm. Yeah. Now this place in the Rainy Nights trilogy is loaded with books. Also, as well, you've got these uh, crenellations here. I think they're called uh, these uh, murder holes for the uh, the archers, or maybe it's just a window where they lead and why they're so dark. I, I have no idea. But still, also you've really got some really nice. Well, I say nice. I mean, you've got patterns, but the color scheme's a bit cack, isn't it? Oh God. This was made in the '90s when everything was grim dark. Or neon, I get my 80s and 90s mixed up, but uh, yeah, it, it definitely wasn't the 70s when this game was made, where you'd normally have those horrible colour schemes. I like the, uh, the, the grunt the knocks have as well, I, I, I very much enjoy that sound effect. Now in, uh, in the original games, enemy reaction times were quite poor. Uh, enemies would react incredibly slowly to, uh, to attacks and they give you plenty of time to recover so I just want to have a look at the, the, the frog there I love the frog designs they would later get reused over and over again in the Reading Nights trilogy also got gems on the walls there uh, but yeah enemies were quite uh, basically like once they attacked that was it, they were spent so it was like almost like a free kill basically once they'd hit you. Uh, making this a very user friendly game but also incredibly easy so replayability is not the best unless you just want to you know kill time. Um, I've said that I've told this story before but uh, when my PC was in repairs I only basically played Spyro the Dragon because of how replayable it was because of how easy it was. Big enemies like this can off with the club cannot be charged but a quick flame that should defeat them. Flaming large enemies kills them. There we go. Um. Yeah. So uh, when my uh, PC was in repairs, all I did was basically just play um, Spyro the Dragon. I'd complete it, and then I'd uh, delete the save and do it again, just like that because I just found it the easiest game to pick up at the time and just play it like that. There's no mini games, there's, well there's hardly any mini games. There's no extra characters you gotta work around with. There's, you know, the loading screens are tolerable. You know, it's not overly difficult and that's why it's so easy to just pick up and play casually. So we got the 100 gems, we've rescued all the dragons and now we can return home to the artisan's homeworld. And then we will face off with Toasty. And now, Stuart Copeland was a drummer for the band of the police. I'm not overly familiar with their uh, 
songs. I, in fact, the only reason why I sort of listened to one of their songs was because of Top Gear, The Police, Do 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 Da 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 Da, which is the name of one of their songs. Um, and um, and, and I mean, he was he was he was the drummer, he was the percussionist, and you can tell that from a lot of his music, especially from this song later on. Uh, so I'm probably going to be talking about that a lot. Um, because the music for this game is astonishing. And even though Stuart Copeland returned to do the music for the uh, Reignited Trilogy, uh, it's not all that great and it suffers the same problems that a lot of uh, these sort of remasters, well, I say a lot of them, the, the two big Activision remasters have suffered. Uh, which is, you know, the Reignited uh, Trilogy and um, Insane Trilogy. So these dogs were a bit of a pain in the ass before. You used to have to uh, uh, roll out of the way of them, but they're a lot easier to dodge now because they only go in a single direction. Whereas before, they used to home in on you, and no matter what, I just couldn't dodge them. So yeah, Spire is a combat roll, and it, this only survived a single game. This was not in the sequels. Um, I was I meant to say that in one of the previous videos I did. Uh, Super Spire fan corrected me, of course. And um, I... Uh, I, never, I don't think I corrected it in that series, so there you go. So thanks very much for that. And everyone else who comments, you make it, you make this worthwhile. Oops. Right. This is where the percussion really shines. That's why I used that song on the countdown for uh, the top 10 levels of Spire of the Dragon. I have to say, I like the part that follows as well. Now I know we're missing the dragon. So let's go back and rescue him. Well, I'll look around. So I never really take the time to look at this place. It looks phenomenal. It really does. Oh, the red on that tower especially. I, I'm a great art critic, aren't I? Uh, it's like I, I'm like Thor High Heels, but brilliant. Has put one of his most devious henchmen in charge of the artisan world. Bring him on! I think I smell a barbecue. Be careful, Spyro. This boss has many tricks up his sleeve. But yeah, it looks absolutely phenomenal. Now, let me just double check. Everything is got good. Oh, I forgot to look at the. There was a window there that looked really nice. A stained glass window, circular. It's... I loved the sea, the glass ceiling in um, Summer Forest in the Reignited trilogy, in the sort of uh, second half of that. Uh, yeah, that that world or, or, or lobby, whatever you want to call it. Now we have to open this door again because we didn't do it. Uh, we didn't actually do the sunny flight previously. But that's okay. Here we go. Now it's sunny flight. Now sunny flight is pretty much entirely optional. The only reason why you do these is because they uh, they offer you uh, a, 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 an amount of gems. So like they're the final three hundred gems I need for this world. Let's see how the flights compare to the original. Now, what I normally do is go round and face everything as it's heading towards me. Now, the flight controls are responsive, but I feel as though... I mean, it, it's sort of like I'm moving in, like, inches rather than, like, millimetres, you know? So, like, when I push the, the stick, it feels very much like a, an old controller rather than a more refined one. But... Oh shit. Oh god. Yep, that's it. Yep. Really high or low dips. I'm not complaining, by the way. It, it's just different. 
Um, and again, for its time, it, it's not too bad. This is to be expected. It still controls very smoothly, and I have to say I'm really glad I haven't had that many problems with the controls. So that's good. Sunny Flight also has some of the best flight music. I mean, this kind of style of music would be persistent throughout them. Um, oh, this part especially. Uh, sorry, as I was saying, um, eventually I'll, I'll remember. Yeah, so the, the sort of style of music was uh, was persistent, and all of the flight songs are, are fan fantastic, truly. Not a bad time. So uh, in this in this game, unlike later ones. Uh, as you go through the arches and destroy the objectives, you get a certain amount of seconds added to the time. Whereas before, you'd give a, you'd be, well, as in later games, you'd be given a generous amount of time, uh, but you wouldn't get any additional time back from uh, going through them. So it's more like checkpoints kind of thing. Uh, for every objective you complete, you get uh, a certain amount of gems. Uh, each one here is worth 60, but if you get them all in one go, you get an additional 60 gems as opposed to 240 uh, if you get them one at a time. So it's had a good time, but I think uh, we'll, we'll just quit. Because we've got everything we want from there. It's not like Spyro uh, 3 or 2, where you get an additional bonus objective. Um, you just do the flight, and then you leave. And that was pretty much the first uh, super flight that we've had. So that was quite pleasant. So this level is, to my knowledge, pretty much done. Let's just have a look. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. So we're going to move on. How many lives do we have, by the way? Seven lives. Peacekeepers, and once we go there, we can always come back, or we can unlock the option, and then we can stay in that lobby. And if there's anything else we want to wrap up, we can. Uh, but because we've 100% completed that lobby, everything's fine. This isn't like the later two games where you might have a bit of backtracking because you need a different character or a certain move or anything like that. Also, saw the music changes for the lobby. Welcome to Peacekeepers, Spyro. Look how our treasure has been turned against us. Stolen. Recover our treasure, Spyro. Collect treasure. Got it. <laughs> okay, now that actually that hint there is a bit more useful than I originally thought it would be because that's the goal of this level. We need about uh, how much is it? How much do we need? Is it about? I th think it's about two thousand treasure. Or oh god, I don't know. It can't be two thousand. It must be one thousand treasure or something like that. Or five hundred. Okay. I know there's two treasure objectives in the game in order to, to go to the next lobby. Uh, you don't need to face off with the boss, by the way, to go to the next lobby. Uh, the boss is pretty much there just for gems. Uh, they offer a large yield of gems, uh, as Toaster did, as this world's boss will. So I'm just going to collect the gems as ever. No blood on the spears, I see, so. That's good. Now, is he gonna show his arse off to me? Show your fucking arse! I wanna see that arse right now. There we are. That! That is why we play Spyro. Now these knocks don't really pose much of a challenge, uh, even when the tents are burned. You can burn the tents before they run away to them. Um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, these guys are also having to kill each other as well. Uh, you can use the cannons to kill uh, enemies. But we need this cannon to destroy this uh, chest here.
<laughs> I love I love the sound effect for it. I I, I love that sound so much. Now I know I'm ignoring the dragons. I, I just like to get um, my gems first. Now I'll show you why I can't use a cannon for these chests here. It's too tough. It also makes a very uh, uh, strange sound, uncharacteristic sound there. Got a container here that we could flame and uh, leave for the gem, or we could charge it and grab it like that. Although I think you've seen those before. Yeah, quite a few of these ideas would not survive uh, uh, the second game, uh, rather the first game that you once these were seen uh, in this game, that was it. Wave goodbye to them. Use this cannon here to get to the next part. And if we go up here as well, as that guy had nowhere to run, so he would have fought and uh, survived. Um, not only have the dragon designs changed, but the portal designs have changed as well. Uh, once again, uh, uh, keeping the portal uh, consistent with the world that we're in. all the gems around here well done Spyro keep up the good work and I know you'll fulfill your destiny destiny I just want to kick some just toast those enemies and collect the treasure <laughs> now that voice actor seems very distinct they sound as though they would be in not just future Spyro games but future um, video games as well I don't know what it, I don't know what it is it's just like when, when they interrupted and said just taste those enemies that's when I sort of felt like I recognize them from somewhere else maybe maybe they're in the credits somewhere I don't know I have to check uh, IMDB which strangely is a really good resource of finding out who did the voices of what um, or really who, who, who did what in the, in the game it lists the credits brilliantly because Wikipedia only tell you things like the composer and the game director and or lead writer and things like that but it won't tell you a lot of the grunts about the grunts and voice actors so that's quite good it's a movie database as well what the hell is it doing video game information can't complain now I just saw the other gems over there. I'll just rescue this dragon again. Hi, Spyro. Sparks the Dragonfly has been doing a good job protecting you. Make sure to keep him strong by feeding him lots of butterflies. That's why I, that's why I always tell myself that the, the reason why I'm so strong is because I eat so much. Honest. Anyway, 200 gems. Now where to? I think we should go to just double up. Yeah, okay, we got everything there. Let's go to Ice Cavern. I won't go to Ice Cavern because uh, this is another level in my top ten. One thing I love about the soundtrack here is that the uh, it sort of has like it's sort of like half danger and half whimsy as well. So I quite like quite like that because it is quite a uh, lethal level, should we say? It's Ulrich. A word of caution, little one. Wait until you grow big, <laughs> like me, before charging those large enemies. So the music changed for him. And that's a song that's in a that's in another level here. Um, Cliff Town, I believe it is. I should know. It's in the it's in the song Doctor Shem. 
which I wrote, and I did mention that it was Dr. Shemp had, at least in Spyro headcanon, um, Dr. Shemp came from Clifftown. And that they wouldn't have him back. And that's all I can remember from that song. Other than he's a certified charlatan and a fuck of sham. Sadism's his bread and butter, and placebos are his jam. Snow, a very s slow traveling snowball. Now I've completely cocked up the rhythm of this level. And it's so easy to do because there's so many ways you can just fly around and get to the end of the level. And you can do this entire level backwards and still get pretty much everything. In fact, to be honest, that's one of the better ways because of uh, uh, some of the backtracking here. Thank you for releasing me. Snap on Mandor, who has one of my favorite voices and lines in the game. Oh, nice. I like the reach on the flames there. As far as flames, um, actually look more like crystals, really, or like, uh, like, you know, like mage, like, like summon swords that fight for you if you're a wizard in a in an RPG or something like that. Okay, maybe they don't, but you know, I, I have to, I have to say something. I think they do. Spyro has wizard swords confirmed. Oh. <laughs> like, how his, like how his feet just flap like that on the on the trot. I like his walk animations. Swiggity swooty, Spyro got that booty. can make their feet very slippery. How? how? How does armor? I've been trying to theorize for years. Uh, how does armor make your feet? I could get I could understand maybe, you know, in iron boots with, you know, I know no leather underneath or whatever could cause poor grip. Even then, I mean, surely Nasty Nork would want them to be, you know, suited for the climates they're in. But then again, this is the guy who turned treasure into shepherds, so I don't know. Oh, there is something I've just been reminded of as well. Now, in my top 10 levels of Spire of the Dragon, I had mentioned that one of these stars had shone brightly. I think it was actually this yellow one here in the center of the screen. Um, I think that was the only one with a uh, color other than the white uh, in the European version. But looking around now, I can see purple, blue, I see another yellow. There's two yellow ones over there. Now, I have to wonder if there is actually some kind of constellation here uh, in the, uh, that the devs had made. And uh, it was some sort of Easter egg or dragon egg in the case of this game. I don't know. Just an idea. I mean, you might say, well, devs weren't that clever at the time, but video game Easter eggs were huge. A lot of meta jokes as well. Like, I saw, I think it was on Discworlds. Um, PS1 disc. It's like, it says if you turn this over, it'll show uh, it'll show uh, a really horrible face or something like that. And then you turn it over and it's a reflection of you because it's, it's a disc. I <laughs> just thought that was, that was clever. But yes, armor does make their feet slippery. Apparently. Maybe it's not the armor. Maybe scientists have, uh, have worked out. Like, this is some kind of quackery. This is what Dr. Shemp told them. Oh yeah, you shouldn't wear armor because it'll make your feet slippery. Like, okay. But actually, it turns out that that was a trick 
to get the arm dragons to not wear um, anti magic items. So when that's not throws them, you could do it successfully. You know, so they've got no resistance. You know, like no save versus spell. Save versus petrification. The music here is very dainty at times, and it takes me back to uh, the Magic Crafters world. With some of the music there. Not Magic Crafters, sorry, I keep mixing them up with Dreamweavers. Dreamweavers world. Done well, Spyro. Some dragons thought you weren't ready, but I knew they were wrong. I'm ready, all right. Ready for what? <laughs> Also, the uh, dragons disappear very differently uh, in this game, and because they don't have any sort of uh, um, tools or, or, or items at their disposal, um, they don't really sort of have any comical uh, actions at the end, like dropping something or um, or doing sort of death to them uh, as they sort of fade out. If you heard those weird sounds there, those are the sounds of life containers. We'll be going to get those in a short while, just as soon as we've uh, got the last four gems here. Thank you for releasing me. Now, Asher was a name in an RPG I was playing some time ago. I can't remember what it was. I think I'm thinking Dragon Age. Maybe Origins or Inquisition. It can't have been Baldur's Gate, could it? Doesn't matter. Mind you, I think Asher was actually. Um, it didn't have the R, and it was pronounced Ash, but with an E on the end. Um, have we got everything? Oh, we've got everything. Oh, in that case. Ah, no, we haven't got everything. But I do know something we can do that will take us back to the beginning and give us a little bonus. If I don't mess it up. I prefer the life containers here in the uh, sequel. So in, in the Reignited trilogy, I think they had claws as well, and the the lid wasn't always open or near enough. So yeah. And it also looks as though it's made of uh, dragon hide as well, uh, matching uh, the details on Spyro's back. So I wonder if uh, perhaps these are some kind of uh, um, failed dragonborn experiments. Or the uh, the mutated ilk of Spyro the Dragon. I've got 40 minutes left. I think I'll do one or two more levels, depending on how long it takes me. Um, we'll quickly do. We'll do Cliff Town. Because I have to say, I'm enjoying this. Now we have 1,600 total treasure. I think the total is about 12,000. I know Spyro 2 was 10,000. And you needed 15,000 treasure to get into the super bonus round of Spyro 3. And the total amount of gems in that game was 20,000. Because it's, you know, trying to up the ante on Spyro 2. And every single fucking way. Oh yeah, something as well, uh, you need to hit these pots with a uh, flame because they uh, spit out gems, but only once. So make sure that if you are missing any gems, you hit those pots uh, with a flame. I also like the stuff inside them as well. See, that makes you grow big and strong, that does.
Now, see, I struggle to remember this music, and again, it's because... I mean, I might be misremembering it. This might actually be the European version of Cliff Town. And, I, and the previous song I could have been thinking of was actually Dry Canyon or something like that, but... This sounds very different to how I remember it. I, I know it from YouTube, but I'm not sure if this was in the original European version. I say European version, what I mean is the PAL version, so it might actually be different uh, elsewhere in Europe. Because if you can't tell, I'm an Englander. So yeah. Right, let's get that. Oh. Oh. Just wanted to show that off as well. How's a dragon supposed to flame metal armor anyway? Remember, Spyro, flame won't harm metal, but charging with your horns, that should do the trick. Now, the music that was playing there was the Spyro end credits song. Only very faintly, though. In a very specific part, I believe. Now, can I hit that firework? Ah! Oh! You can get up there, uh, as you will see later. Now, I've got to traverse these stairs. Now, when you get to the top of these stairs, you can... Uh, um, there is a whirly gig, the sort of blue swirly thing. Uh, that will appear, and that will allow you to uh, go up there faster. By the way, I'm only doing one episode of this, so, um, today, anyway, so, when I upload the Reignited Trilogy, you'll have this shortly after, and then I should have time to, uh, should have some time to read the comments, because when I record next, it will be, I'll check the calendar, but yeah, so you've got till then to get your new comments and whatever, and then I can read those in the next episode, I mean, I'll try to read all your comments and respond to them when I remember. And if I don't respond to them, don't be offended. Um, you know, I um, I do read them. It's just I'm not always able to remember them all because I've, I've got to remember them. I don't have like my my laptop to my side or anything like that to, to, to check these to check what people have said, which might be an idea actually. Just double check those pots. The yummy soup. That is actually how I imagine. The energy drink dragon soup to look hey, like. What's on the other side of that river? Why don't you glide there and find out? That's a good idea. I love his wings, by the way. It reminds me of War Warlocks from World of Warcraft. Um, be like the green armor, like because like green and purple's their aesthetic. Oh, I forgot to make a joke about Full Metal Jackets earlier as well. <laughs> The Norks are wearing full metal jackets. There you go. It's not even a joke, is it? It's a reference. I can hear the bass as well going do 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 like that, and that reminds me very much of uh, well, that was in that was like the sort of the main beats of Dark Hollow. Um. No, it's not playing now, but it, oh, I think it was then. Yeah, there. And that's that's uh, a sort of beat that plays uh, quite often throughout uh, Spiral One's songs. See, on the few occasions I uh, write original music, I tend to set the beat to something like. Uh, the intro, I think it was the intro, I can't remember it entirely, or particularly well, but uh, I said to the intro of like uh, Dio's LA Connection. You can get to almost anywhere from here. If I were you, I'd use that whirlwind there. Yeah, again, the Spyro and credit music was used there. I'm sorry, I've got to masturbate the cushion again. The, the percussion's fantastic. I, I, I love Stuart Copeland's music. Uh, if you haven't seen the interview for Stuart Copeland creating the uh, music for Spyro, 
it's fantastic. He's so funny in that. And they pay me to do this. So it's brilliant. Oh, another thing as well. So these spikes up here uh, signify that there's a barrier and we can't pass it. I do believe that would have a more blue appearance, those rings would have a more blue appearance to them uh, in Spyro 2, uh, specifically in Robotica Farms. Um, I think they appear in Spyro 2 as well, which is where you'd sort of slide down the hills in the Reignited Trilogy, there's these slopes of sand, so you can't get over them. Um, I think in the in Spyro 2 there's those barriers except without the spikes so you wouldn't be able to really sort of see it it's, it really is an invisible wall in fact such a thing is a lot more horrifying in uh, the Hammer House of Horror TV show um, yeah it's a horrible episode of that with about an invisible wall Not for the fate of heart was that show. Very good, but don't know what it's got to do with Spyro though. And then again, you'll come to learn that about me if you haven't ever seen me do any videos before or this kind of series. Have a look around with that glint of the gem. Because I think I did miss one when I was going behind a temple there. Temple? No, 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 sorry. Worship of false idols is forbidden. Spyro is the one true god. So, I meant to say entrance. Because no one would dare worship anything besides Spyro now, would they? Would they? The only uh, idol you are allowed, of course, is like you know, the Crush Bandicoot Cable guys. I mean, I've got them set up now. Like, I've got my cable guys, and like the spiral one's okay. Um, I, I prefer the crash one because it's like it just looks like it's way more detailed. You can't really see the mold lines as, as easily. Uh, the the ones on spiral though, you can quite clearly see where they stuck the arms and then the horns and things like that. And it, it doesn't really look all that great to be honest. And it doesn't hold uh, either my Xbox One or PS4 controller very well. Uh, also, one of them I think was the Crash Bandicoot one came with the wrong controller type. Uh, sorry, not co not controller type. Uh, cable type and I say even then I say wrong it's like no it's just one that doesn't work because it's like a type C I think it was and it's like for iPods and iPhones and Mac you know Apple products I don't know should have taken my own advice earlier oh well so anyway that's done uh, just check how I got all that stuff oh yes I can also press the uh, select button as well or the back button on the uh, Xbox One controller, and I can open up the inventory and I can see my total progress, dragons, gems, and eggs. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I've got my cable guys, and the Spyro one, I mean, well, they both look good. They're both based on the Insane Trilogy and Reignited Trilogy um, um, sort of character models as well. But I think the Spyro one's the worst one. Um, it just doesn't really hold my PS4 controller all that well. And even then, it's like when you put the cable in, and it, it sort of like collides with their noses or their snouts or whatever. Um, it says that you can't really rest it comfortably. So I'm not going to be so bold as to say it's a rip off or anything, but I will say it's disappointing. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I think those guys. When I get rid of my TV over there, I think I'll maybe put them there to gather dust and hold shite basically because I'm perfectly content with putting my controllers on the on, on the tape on, on my desk you know and they just take up too much room to really sort of justify it um, you know when my, yeah where my controllers are um, you know are very long you know just about as long as, as the base of the, the cable guy uh, the stack 
these statues. Uh, the, the sort of circular base for the, uh, the statues is too big. I love the music here. It is phenomenal. Oh yeah. I also love these guys off the edge to their doom. They still got the gems. Another thing as well I should have pointed out is that Sparks picks up your gems for you. Uh, something that Super Sparrowfan was saying in uh, the Reading Natural Trilogy was the, um, that Sparks didn't pick up gems while you were in flight. And that was a pain in the ass. And I, it, it really began to grate on my nerves, did that. Because I was perfectly fine being blissfully ignorant uh, before, but it's so different to uh, how Sparks pick up gems while you're just jumping. You could feel the difference. And that's uh, and when I could sort of feel something that significantly, however small that, however small an actual thing it is, if I can feel it that much, then it's a problem. For that. It's a big market. Let's a, a strike against uh, the remaster. This guy thinks he's so cool. You don't know what it's been like listening to him over and over. But I'll tell you one thing. He should watch his back. No, oh, yeah. Why is that, man? I mean, I don't know why I don't know why he's complaining about Dr. Shem talking so much, because all he says is ho 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 over and over again. Oh yeah, and by the way, his, his name in the Japanese version of the game is Dr. Cool. And that made it into the song Dr. Shemp. Um Yeah, and I think that's maybe why they called him that's why uh, rather that's why uh, the dragon there said he thinks he's so cool. I mean, you look at this motherfucker. Tell me he's not cool. I mean, for starters, he's a witch doctor. Okay, he's got a bare ass, and he's got silver hair. Like, I mean, I mean, I'm inheriting your dad's silver hair, so that's nice. Um, he's and he, and he wears sunglasses. In fact, if it weren't for the bare ass, I'd actually think this character was me, dad. No offense if you're watching this, Dad. Oh, uh, Dad doesn't wear sandals though, so I'll, I'll, I'll give, I'll, I'll give him that much. Besides, anyway, if, if, if he was any more like Dad, we'd have to call him Dad the Cool. Or Dad to Shemp. No, oh God, I just realised how close his name is actually to the dad's name. So, okay, yeah. Hmm. Still missing five gems. You know, I used to blame not being able to find the gems on the foliage in uh, it's it's in uh, Spyro uh, the Rain Knight trilogy, but but now I'm actually like missing gems. I'm having to backtrack and God knows what. Yeah, it's kind of embarrassing. I have to admit. And again, I've got no sparks pointing in the direction. Oh. Oh. So it was the. Uh, it was that fanatic there. It was the uh, culprit. Fair enough, I'll take, I'll take that one. No, I shouldn't have missed that one, really. At least being as experienced as I am, I could understand if, it, you know, if a new player were to miss that. I wish to say about the level design on this one. I love the uh, moon, uh, very uh, foreboding. Uh, yeah, the arena design here isn't really all that clever or interesting. Um, not that it's really any worse than most 3D platform game boss arenas. It just seems very. Uh, I don't want to sound. I don't want to say ragtag. Um, So, rickety, I might say. Uh, I tell you what, I'm going to do one more level because I feel like it. I, I don't want to stop playing this game. Um, I'm going to do Dry Canyon, but I'm going to have to hurry up about it, and then we will uh, uh, call it a day. 
got 2,300 treasure. How much do I need here? Uh, oh yeah, because we need to do night flight as well, don't we? Shit. I like the gun sounds as well. The knocks still sound just as good. I'm certainly having an easier time with the thieves. Uh, I've noticed they move a lot less fast. I could have said that a bit better, couldn't I? I noticed they moved a lot slower. They're a lot more forgiving here than they are in the really nice trilogy. That said, I'm going to fuck up on the Thief and the Magic Craft as well, I'm sure. But, uh, we'll, uh, kill that Thief when they run away from us. I should have just stuck with across that bridge when we get to it. I think I saw some jokes back there as well. Thank you for releasing me. I could believe that that character was voiced by the Conan as a sort of parody of himself. Life container blinking there. Oh, sorry, one second, better just check the time actually. Right, we've, got, we've got time for this level then because I've got to uh, prepare for uh, Daddy Kin's return. I don't appreciate Dry Canyon's music enough. Especially for this part. So I don't think I've really got much else to uh, say about this level for the time being. So what I'm gonna do is uh, so I'm going, to just, I'm going to, I guess, just vent a little bit. So in the Reunited Trilogy, I um, I had a few woes, as you'll know, with, uh, with the Elgato, the, game, the Elgato Game Capture HD, to record on PS4. So I basically uninstalled the software because it was causing me much grief now. Gliders. You are a good glider, eh, Spyro? I was born to glide. sound too confident in my abilities there so um so i even when i wasn't recording with it i had a bit of a problem in fact i had to uninstall the software for the elgato because it was causing me that many problems playing and recording this uh, elgato sound capture kept conflicting with my uh, uh my monitor's audio and therefore I couldn't record my own voice in the Incredible game. Glide, Spyro. I thought I'd be stuck here forever with those ugly vultures standing on my head. Those birds might look tough, but they're pretty tasty. Plain broiled, with a pinch of salt. I cut him off a bit quickly there. Um... But, um... Yeah, so even when I wasn't using it, it got its last defeat in by uh, fucking around with my drivers for my uh, audio device. So yeah, so that's done now. I'm glad, and I can continue. I keep hearing the blink of that life box, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look around for it. Now around this corner is a very treacherous uh, um, number of enemies. That'll be quicker, or else they'll shoot you. I mean, that's really as hard as Spyro gets when it comes to its, its enemy placement. It's like maybe three enemies or whatever. 
I mean, there's greater numbers later on, but not too threatening. Ever since you're a wee puff of smoke, we've known, uh... You've known? Ah, I forget. Fair enough. Yeah. So hopefully, um, <laughs> my complaints about the Elgato pretty much end there. Um... I'm done with the software at least until June when I uh, need to record um, Crash Nitro Kart if I choose to record it. And I, I probably will do my first impressions of that game again. Um, but it does mean, of course, recording the entire game. But yeah, I, li I like to sort of immortalize these things because you've got to understand that I don't remember my first memory of, um, of Spyro the Dragon. And I didn't know that game reviewing was, I mean, like, when I grew up, I wanted to talk about video games. I didn't know it was called game reviewing. And I didn't know that YouTube would ever become a thing or anything like that, so... I... I, I, I wish I could have used video to uh, capture my memories. And things like that, and... Um, yeah, so that's why I did a bit of Spyroing Nets Trilogy. With all the woes of the Elgato. Um... You know, I, I still say that it, it, it did ruin my first impressions of the of the trilogy and of the the games, but oh well. But at least while doing this now, um, you know, now that I've had the years of experience to play these games, you can now see my thought process when it comes to uh, why I enjoy the game so much. Hopefully Autumn Plains records properly in Spyro 2 Gateway to Glimmer as we call it in the real world. So this is right. I am going to very quickly do much to the uh, to the risk of making this video too long and it'll take forever to upload and people will be bored out of their fucking minds. I am going to do Night Flight. It shouldn't take very long, about two, three minutes. So yeah. Now, has that part stayed open or do I need to use the cannon again? Oh no, once it's done, it's done. Uh, very quickly, just check. We've got everything, haven't we? Just about. So into night flight we go. And I love the uh, the skybox there or the backdrop. Is it a skybox? I don't know. Please let me know. I guess my question, my community question, if I'm going to do one, I should ask these earlier in the video. Um, what is your favourite flight or speedway? I'd like to keep it to flights in uh, Spyro 1, but if you've never played Spyro 1 or you haven't, um, you know, you, you can't really pick one, you don't like any of the flights from Spyro 1, then let me know a speedway. And if you've never played any of the games before and this is your first time viewing them, well, welcome to uh, the greatest game ever made. Um, with some awesome music as well. I love the night flight music, it's fantastic. But yeah, let me know your favorite flight, because I can't really choose my favorite flight or speedway. I mean, I'm very biased toward ice levels, so ice speedway would be a good one. Night flight's quite good. Uh, ice oosh. Icy oosh shit. Uh, that, that, that's not one. So we've got the gems for uh, doing the rings, but we haven't got the rings for doing the archers. Uh, the rings? We've got the, we've got the gems for doing the rings of the chest, but not the ring, the gems for doing the arch. So I'm thinking of Sonic. Because Team Sonic Racing is coming out soon. Seven days, I think it is. I so look forward to that. I mean, I'm not super hyped for it. Like, I, I, I've got tempered expectations. I, I know what to expect. But it's a kart racer and I just love them. You know? I'm not in it for Sonic. I'm not in it for Transformed or anything like that. I just want a good kart racer. And I know that Super Mario will deliver. Well, they'll, they'll deliver an okay they'll, they'll deliver a car race, so I'm sure, at the very least. We'll see. <laughs> but no, I can't choose my favourite um, speedway. Do I choose Icy Speedway or uh, Icy Flight? I really like Ocean Speedway, but I've got my problems with that one. That might be a video in the future that uh, I could review the individual flights um, in a single video. I'm 
really go through them. Uh, like what makes a good, what makes a good flight, what makes a good uh, speed away. So yeah, I think the name was changed from from uh, flight to speed away because it was less about flight in the later two games and more about the speed um, and, and the time attack. Because this is all about like that you don't really do any sort of supercharging or super. Well, there isn't any super flame in the other one, but still. So now we've got all uh, 300 gems from here. We're going to get extra 180 there. It is 300 gems, isn't it? I wouldn't like to try again, thank you. I could have done better, uh, but no. Now, in the Reunited Trilogy, that is a lot tighter, I think. I think you, you, you've got to try even harder to get that, uh, to, to, to succeed. And you've got to get your flames out of the last second. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to park my ass uh, firmly in the next world. And then we will uh, continue our adventures there. Also, as well, I will be using uh, the uh, safe state as well. So uh, I'm not ready just yet because I I want to just double check. I've got everything here, haven't I? I've uh, got everything with the rear one as well. Okay, everything adds up. So we're ready to go to. try this there we go the magic crafters and we can also go on to the uh, artisan's own world as well so there we have a bit of spyro the dragon thank you ever so much for watching i uh, hope you all have a pleasant time please do leave me a comment so let me know what you think and i'll try and come up with an answer to that question if i still remember to ask it uh, what is my favorite flight or speedway but here you get to have a brief glimpse at the next lobby as you can see, it's um, it's a bit more linear because we can't really fly over there, so we've got to go through a, a huge gauntlet of, uh, of rooms beginning here. So let's see where that takes us. So thank you ever so much for watching. I will see you later, and it has been an absolute pleasure making this content for you. I'll see you again soon. Ta-ta for now.